Welcome back, ZRK fans, to more analysis of Don Airman, your host, Chad, if you're 3333 or Dominic, or whatever. And... We, there we go. And we're on to another match that's going to be between Orphelius and Randy on Shimmer Shore. And like I said, I want to see what's going on with the overall C meta these days. And we do have ship versus ship, and there's no surprise there, I suppose. And with that, we... I'm, I'm curious what we're going to see out of that. So, riding out, right out, we're starting with Cutters, coming out from Randy... Hunters coming out from Morpheus. And this has kind of been the thing. We often see the Hunters being used... Like, Cutter and Seawolf tends to be one idea. We're seeing Cutter and Corsair. Interesting. So Seawolf would actually work really well in this case. A Hunter and Seawolf combo coming out from Orphelius... Sorry, from Randy would do the trick, as Orphelius is going for entirely above-water options. So yeah, Cutter with the Disarm, able to stop that Hunter once the Hunter nearly kills it, with support though, which Randy is not building, they are going for an early Mariner, so they're not going to be able to help help out this Hunter, that Hunter will be sunk. But at the same time, there's the next thing, the Cutter coming in here, another Cutter for Orphelius on top of the, on top of the Corsair, which does mean Orphelius has a fair amount of room to push this. So, what exactly is going to happen is probably going to come down to whether or not we see Randy go for Seawolves. Like, the Hunters aren't a bad idea, but once the Corsair gets in here, they don't really have a chance. Like, the Corsair and the Cutter combination here, they're going to just completely cut out the Hunters from any combat. And at that point, there's not a whole lot of point anymore, because at that point, the Hunters are dead. So, I don't expect this is going to go especially well for Randy right off the bat. But, really, to me, it just comes down to the Seawolves. If Seawolves are built, then there is a chance. At this point, Seawolves are not being built. Corsair is being built, but the Cutters... The Cutters can just disable that. I mean, Randy just going for trying to push as much as they can in the Hunter game, hoping for basically outrating the Cutters, but then the Cutters, like I said, the more there are, the more disarming happens, and the harder it is for their opponent to actually deal with anything, so this isn't going to work especially well. I just, I just don't see it. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just being too skeptical, but it looks to me like it's not going to be especially effective. As the Cutters are getting in here and should be able to just completely disarm this Corsair. And the Hunters on top of that, so at this point, Randy has no functional army. The Corsair Force Retreat, the Hunters being sunk. Granted, it's outside of their base and a couple Cutters did die, but Orphilius is just able to continue spamming Cutters while expanding. Granted, Randy also managing to expand a fair bit along the south side of the map, but that's the south side of the map, and... Orphelius thus far has pretty strong control over basically everything in the north and northeast. And although the Hunters... No, not going down. Enough Hunters were in place that they are going to be able to get rid of the Corsair. That's opening everything up for Randy. And now all this reclaim inside of Randy's base. That is huge. How much reclaim is there anyway? 317... No, not 317. That's not what it is. It's 450 reclaim just around their base. That's it. And it looks like Orphelius is double-checking what's going on over to the southeast, which is wise of them, as they are going to be able to find this Mariner, and that Mariner is going to be in some trouble. Non-complete trouble. I mean, it's still going to be saved. The rest of the team comes in. But at the very least, Orphelius is managing to maintain a bit of an economic lead from this and turning that into more cutters. Because why not build more cutters? The answer would be because your opponent is going for Seawolves, but that is not what Randy is doing. So, hey, there you go. Randy has some room to really push back at this. But Orphelius is trying to limit that as best as possible, and now the force has been split up thanks to that raid. Cutters in the main base, and Orphelius are going to be able to get a fair bit of mileage, getting rid of yet another hunter. Probably no more than that just because of the, the lack of damage on these units. I mean, cutters only deal like 30 damage, so they're not, they're not doing much damage. They're just preventing themselves from taking damage. And that's the key thing. And now it's actually with this many cutters, with seven cutters, it only takes one or two volleys to get rid of a hunter. Ten cutters to bring it down to one volley. Like per hunter. And a lot of these cutters are being built. Nineteen so far, constantly streaming out of Orphelius' factory. They aren't even bothering to go for anything else. And they should be able to beat the hunters, but it all comes down to positioning. If they manage to get the drop on the hunters, they're good. If the Corsairs come in and there's no easy way for these things to get a drop on the Corsairs, which there is, it's just a matter of knowing they're there. And actually, they do know they're there, so it shouldn't be a problem. It's still a bit tricky. But the Corsairs, if they're disarmed, of course, they can't do anything. It's just it takes a lot more hunters, or sorry, a lot more cutters to stun out a Corsair. 
The Hunters, however, are pretty much screwed from the get-go, and actually this Corsair as well! It only takes about three volleys, and the first one completely disarms it, so these cutters are being exceedingly efficient. Actually, the Mariner might go down as well, and that will be the real win. If that Mariner dies, then Randy has no easy way to expand. That Lotus won't be coming up, and Orphelius should be able to completely push this. And actually, as it is, that Mariner is being forced to retreat some. At the same time, Orphelius taking the entire northeast side of the map, so this is working beautifully for Orphelius. As they have switched over to some Corsairs, now that they have a very robust Cutter army, the Corsairs just to help clean things up on top of the Cutter's disarms. The only question, of course, is are they going to regroup in time before Randy pushes forward, which might actually be the case, as Randy is pushing into the Cutter's and those could have gone for the Corsair. Actually, they are circling around to go for the Corsair. Ooh, I don't know agree with that positioning. The Hunters are being disarmed completely, but a lot of the Cutters were killed in the process. About half of them were lost. Now, that being said, the Corsair is still up, and the Hunters as well still up, so not a whole lot of damage happening. Unfortunately, Orphelius' Corsairs did not get in close enough. And now that the Siren is up, well, this is completely moot. The Siren is way too much HP to be able to be disarmed by a handful of Cutters like that. So, really, at this point, someone needs to build submarines. I don't understand why people aren't building submarines. Someone has to if they want to win. No one's going to get anywhere. I mean, the Siren's going to be able to push quite a bit, but even then, the Siren got heavily damaged during that engagement. And Orphelius, they still have an economic lead. They don't have the Caretaker yet. They are building it, but they have the, econ the economy to make it work. Once they actually get that second Caretaker up and actually are able to completely burn off their metal and not excess. But that's the key thing, though, is that Orphelius has had a stronger economy this entire game. Randy, however, has managed to use what they have to still get a larger army value. They managed to kill more units. Quite a few more units, actually. Kill 800 metal more worth of units, thanks to that Siren. But if that Siren goes down, well, that would have been all for nothing. And at this point, while the Reclaim is working in their favor, they don't have any healing on the Siren. They are building another Siren, so... It's got them down to, can both Sirens come together at once? And it looks like it won't even matter. There isn't enough firepower to take out the Siren before its friend comes and helps it. Bit of a close run thing. And that's the thing. Actually, Orphelius pointed out that they wouldn't, they didn't build Seawolves because of the Hunters being built. That's a fair point. But given that the Hunters have not been built recently, and even when they are built, the Cutters just deal with them, Cutter Seawolf would still manage to deal with this. I'm not saying Seawolf on their own, I'm saying Cutter-Seawolf combo. Just because that way you'd be able to stun out the Hunters and then tear everything apart with the submarines. But, alas, that was not what it was going for. However, what is what it was gone for was this giant force of Cutters, which is still managing to do a fair amount of work. It's just that now the Siren's up, the only thing that's going to stop them is something underwater or maybe something in the air. But Cutters alone, like mass Cutters are not going to do the trick. That Sonic weapon just pierces through them and just kills everything. But apparently that is exactly what Orphelius is going for, so at least they'll have a lot of raiders to work with, and stopping mariners and generally keeping their economy strong is one way to win the game, so long as they're able to maintain that presence and not lose their entire army to a single good splash shot. Which, C being what it is, and the Corsairs coming up for Randy as they are, that could very well be the case. However, that is still, like I said, exactly the thing. The Sonic Gun is destroying basically everything. All these cutters going down thanks to that Sonic Gun. I mean, luckily for them, they managed to disarm a couple of the Sirens, but it doesn't even matter. As long as one of them can shoot, the entire force is dead. However, at the same time, Orphelius does have that economic lead, does have the production, doesn't actually have the factory building anything, and I don't know why. Okay, getting some Mistrals. Okay, that's also a good choice. You can go for that at this point. That does make some sense. And at this point, like, for Sirens, I mean, the best thing to counter them with, I'd say, actually would be Mistrals. The Sonic Blaster can hit submarines. The Mistrals just outpower them from a distance. So yeah, not a bad choice. A little bit late, but I can kind of see that submarines are a very generalist unit that's quite strong and honestly very intimidating. At this point, though, even even with the Sirens being built up and the damage Randy is starting to deal, Orphelius is still so far ahead in economy that even in terms of anything else, like unit value is definitely... Nah, it's definitely still in favor of Randy, and a large part of that is the Sirens being extremely efficient. Like, they're getting rid of the Cutters, and the Cutters can't really do the damage they need to do, but there aren't the support forces to actually keep them in the game. 
some of them are in the back lines, but at this point, with Randy just hunting behind the back lines, there is... there isn't much. The Orphelius' forces are now split, having to defend their own expansions, as well as trying their best to just deal with the Sirens coming forward. Still, though, Orphelius has expanded very aggressively into the western side of the map, and with that, even the raiding doesn't put Orphelius behind in terms of money. However, this attack will! Randy pushing Orphelius quite a ways out of position, and that means Orphelius is not going to be able to defend these Sirens especially well. Unfortunately for them, the Sirens were mostly dead. A lot of units died to kill those Sirens, but they did mostly die. Unfortunately, mostly is not enough. Fortunately, though, Sea Wolves! We get the Sea Wolves! We get what I asked for, and this is exactly what I was asking for them. I mean, it gets rid of the Corsair, no problem. The Siren, not so much, but the Corsairs are the current biggest damage threat. So as long as those can be dealt with, then most of the rest of there is going to be fine. I mean, the Mistrals will get rid of the Siren, no problem. Really, it's just getting rid of the Corsairs that was a concern, and now that that's been done, and now that there's a bunch of Sea Wolves, well, Morphelius has a pretty good position to work from here. They go go for the Cutters they've been going for this entire time. They could easily make this work, and Cutter Mistral Sea Wolf, yeah, that could easily take this game. Especially with the money they have, and the money they've had. Especially, especially now that Attrition has evened out, and Orphelius now has a 600 metal advantage on their army value. Granted, that accounts for, like, half of the Cutters, in which will likely die in the first engagement. That being said, though, with all the Hunters in play, they might not do so. So... Well, actually, I kind of like this positioning. The Cutters in front are going to be able to stop the Hunters before the Hunters are able to get down to the Sea Wolves. And that makes it a bit easier for the Sea Wolves to get in once everything's set up. Of course, that does require the Sea Wolves actually get there eventually, which I don't think they will. I think I think Orphelius is so scared of the Hunters that they don't want to push anything forward unless the Cutters manage to get rid of all of them. And that's a reasonably fair option. I mean, I, I get the concern. And at the same time, Orphelia is having to rebuild everything over here as well, which is a bit of a pain, but they had the money for it. They have a decently strong economy, they can rebuild fairly qu quickly, and Randy has only just now gotten to parity for economy, and that's with Reclaim. And not to mention, Orphelius does have this Reclaim to work with as, as well. They've got 15, almost 2,000 metal worth of Reclaim. In the very near their base, they have 1,000 metal worth of Reclaim. They could easily pick that up and use that to push a much, much larger army. And now the Cutter's coming in here to stop those Hunters from really managing to do all that much. That's going to open things up a little bit. The Sea Wolves able to get in with the Disabled Hunters, but only one of them goes in. Still, though, Orphelius... Man, actually, not managing to find much. The Mistrals are being very weirdly inaccurate. That's kind of annoying. I almost think that it would be better just to have units be split up a bit. Like, try to push some units around back to split up some of Randy's forces. Especially if they can get rid of the Envoy here. Bear in mind, this does not have a depth charge anymore. It used to, it no longer does. Orphelius is bearing that in mind, sending their Sea Wolves over to the back to deal with it. And that should be able to manage soon enough. I mean, the Hunters are in place to stop it, and unfortunately, yeah, that Defender's Advantage is going to be a bit of a problem. I mean, at least two Sea Wolves can get rid of a Hunter, but not efficiently enough. Not for cost. So yeah, I totally get where... I, I get what you're talking about. Oh, Orphelius didn't know that. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. The the Envoy got changed. It got changed a while ago. I'm not even sure when, because no one plays C. But it got changed a little while ago to just be an artillery unit. That's it. Like, the only units that can hit underwater right now, other than underwater units, are Hunters and Sirens. Everything else is entirely above water. But I can totally understand, because people don't play C very often, and it gets changed radically every once in a while. Because no one plays C, and so Aquanum in particular has been trying, not recently, but had originally been trying to just make C more viable. Like, make, make water a theater of war that's actually interesting to play on. And make ships themselves more interesting to work with. And that has led to interesting matchups. I mean, this is definitely more fun to watch than C had been, say, two years ago. But it also means that it's kind of difficult to know exactly how, to, how best to set things up, because C is two theaters. You have underwater and on the water. And surface warfare, that's pretty much land, but with no hills. But when you're dealing with underwater warfare, that becomes tricky. It's almost like air. And you have some units that are dedicated to dealing with it, and some generalist units, and it's not quite sure how best to handle how to distribute anti-air, like dedicated anti-air versus generalist anti-air. But 
that is kind of beside the point right now, as we don't have a whole lot of underwater units anymore. Again, we're back to Hunter versus Cutter, essentially where we were at the beginning of the entire match. Just a bit more money on both sides, a bit more room to rebuild their armies on both sides, but not much more being built. I mean, bearing in mind that at this point, the heaviest unit essentially is the Envoy. Envoy and Siren. That's... There's not much to develop in the Sea Factory. Like, there used to be the Serpent, which was a heavy submarine, and the Mistral used to be... had a different name, but it used to be a very heavy unit. Now it's a considerably lighter missile cruiser. And then, of course, there's a Strider Hub to the Reef, but that is way too expensive, and I don't expect to see that. I expect we're just going to see Sirens pushing forward. Like, Siren Cutter versus Siren Hunter. Or Siren Cutter Corsair versus Siren Hunter Corsair. And I do think that gives Orphilius the advantage. I, I still think that Cutter is the way to go here against the Mass Hunters, so long as the Cutters are actually in position. Because right now they're going in one at a time and actually managing to do a fair amount of damage despite the fact that they're going in one at a time and theoretically at a disadvantage tactically. And also, oh, nicely done! The Cutter's going in from the side of the line. You don't usually see that actually work out in 0 okay. Like, cutting the flanks like that, but it just did. And that again puts a little bit more advantage to Orphilius, but most of that has as has always been this entire round, been a question of money. Orphilius has always been making more money. Randy's has always been a bit more efficient at actually killing Orphilius' troops. However, with the Siren up, this could very well change. I mean, the Cutter can obviously stun out the Hunters, while the Siren helps along with the Corsairs and mass destroying them. Assuming these Corsairs don't just kill all the Cutters, which they might do, there are 23 Cutters on the field and about 20 in this particular battle. So the combination of everything, yeah, the Siren is able to get the mileage it needs, and that's opening everything up. Orphilius now should be able to get rid of the Siren over in the south here with no problems, even with the Corsairs coming in here. It will be a trade of Sirens. Actually, no, it won't even be a trade of Sirens. Randy's still managing to do better with the higher health HP Siren. Although, doesn't matter. Now that this disarmed, the Corsairs will be able to finish it off, and with that, Randy is slightly behind, or no, yeah, slightly behind, or at least... Buying enough that they figured out time to throw in the towel. Well, that was... That was quite a close match. I mean, most of it was essentially just the same units the entire round, and I do think Hunters are not going to beat the... Beat the Cutters. Like, Seawolves are going to be able to deal with the Cutters. Hunter Seawolf would actually be really dangerous. But we didn't see either player go for subs. But yeah, C is weird, and honestly, I only understand as much as I do because I was talking to Google Frog during the tournament last week, because they understand a fair bit about C, and they were telling me a lot about this stuff while we were casting together. But that's really about it. Like, C is weird. So I can't say I blame anyone for having an odd time of it, and honestly, the way people were playing made a lot of sense. Go for the Raiders, build up what you can of units that are able to maybe, maybe get rid of them in some numbers to at least press an advantage, and then once you get enough money, just go for a gen strong generalist. That's a safe enough strategy. Anyway, that is going to be that match. So the next match we have today is going to be a match between Randy again and Golda on Dual Icy Run. So that'll be up in a couple minutes. Stay tuned. Because at least that one is going to be a match people know what's going on in.